I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. They're going to run after me. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh, your enemies, and all his army through his chosen chariots, y'all, his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chosen chariots, chariots and his horsemen. Verse 19. Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from the front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other side. So neither went near the other all night long. Your enemies are hell long, right? Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night, the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters divided. Verse 22. And the Israelites, somebody say, went through. Went through the sea on dry ground. Though with a wall of water on their right and on their left. Verse 23, the Egyptians pursued them. Anybody ever pursued you? And all Pharaoh's horses and chosen chariots, chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the, la- during the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He jammed the wheels of their chosen chariots so that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from these Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them and against us, the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak, the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea, not one of them survived. Somebody say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I hope y'all heard that. I invite you to bow your head as we begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you throne, asking you right now, God, that you might bring us through it all. Said in your word, Father, if we would just believe, we could ask what we will. Believe it, and trust it in you, and you'll make it happen. And so today, God, through today's message, we pray that you might give someone the obedient ear to not just hear your word, not just to be still, but to move on. To look what's in their hands, to stretch it forth, and allow you to create a miracle in the midst of a mess. God, we know you can do it. You can do it corporately, but more importantly, God, you can do it personally. And so I'm praying that you free somebody's mind today so their thoughts will follow. And they can begin to think victory. They can begin to think themselves happy. They begin to think themselves free from whatever is holding them like Egypt. God, I praise your name for what you're about to do in this place. I haven't yet praised God. If you don't do nothing else, you've already done enough. Yes. In Jesus' name, we bless you. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus will never say no. Sing Jesus will never say no. Never say no. You can call him early in the morning. You can call him late at night. I know Jesus will never say no. Never 
that all things work together for the good of them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. All right. Here's the truth. The worst problem is not coming to a problem. The worst problem is not being able to get through your problems. All right. Here's the question. Has anyone ever had the kind of trouble that you got yourself into that you could not get yourself out of? All right. Come to pull pulpit to the door if you're facing problems with God on your side. Know that he's not through with you until you've gotten through it. All right. Okay, maybe y'all just catch that. He's not through with you until you have made it through. All right. And I'm going to say through it all. Yeah, yeah. In the book of First Kings, the man named Elijah. Elijah was a man that you would think would have no problems. He's a man who has seen a young boy raised from the dead. Elijah is a man who has seen unlimited flow of flour and oil. Elijah was a man who had seen so many things in his own life that you would think that he would have no problems at all. But when he defeats the prophet, when he defeats the idol worshippers of Baal, somebody named Jezebel says, I want him dead. Even Elijah himself got to run into the wilderness because he was scared. Elijah had problems. King David had problems. Are you with me today? The apostle Paul had problems. Peter, who denied God, created problems for himself. The woman at the well had problems. Everybody in here has got problems. All right. But when God presents you with a problem, you can be sure that you can come through it all. The word of God says in Zechariah 4, 6, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. I have said a mouthful because some of us feel like that in order to get through our problems, we must overpower them. God says in his word, no, don't overpower your problems. All you got to do is bring it to me. I got your back. I can not only bring you to it, but I can bring you through it. Three things I want to get to you today. The first thing is if you want, if you want to make it through it all, know this. God's spirit is always in control. Let me put it dot, 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 even in the middle of a mess. Yeah, yeah a messy situation. God's spirit is still in control. The truth is, is that if you're sitting here listening to me right now, God does want you free. God wants you free of oppression. He wants you free of captivity. He wants you free of bondage. He wants you free of darkness, of doubt, of impurities. He wants you free of addictions. He wants you free of that attitude, that anger. He wants you free of whatever it is you're going through, God wants you free of it. He don't want you being handcuffed to alcohol. He don't want you handcuffed to weed. He don't want you handcuffed to a bad, a bad attitude. Right. God doesn't want you handcuffed to unemployment. God doesn't want you handcuffed, handcuffed to chronic. This is chronic. He wants you free right now. Oh, there's somebody said, hey, you're not listening to me. Why? Because you're bound. you got a stronghold. And God said, I want you, I came that you might have light and have light more abundantly. How can you have abundant life if you can't move or you don't halt or you got something tied around your ankle that's slowing you down? God says, I want you free. Like the Israelites in this beautiful account, there are two million of them. Yeah. Yeah. Two million of them, yet very few of them can see the hand of God moving. Oh, what am I saying? That means that I could be looking at a congregation of folk. Y'all could be standing here foaming at the mouth, falling out, slain in the spirit. And trust me, everybody in here has not seen the move of God. Come on, man. Huh? 
Uh -huh. Two million of them marching. And yet everybody is not hearing the word of God. There's some folk that's just like the folk that was standing by the water, uh, dipping into the water. Some folk are scared yeah. of what the future that they're facing. But you got to understand that the spirit of God is always at work in your life, even with a prison sentence. Yeah. Even with that addiction, even what you're going through, God does see you. God saw Christ's missionary. Ha! I know it may have felt like he didn't see us. I know it may have looked like he didn't see us. Can I get a witness? God sees us. Even with what we're going through. So why would God do that? God would do that because God understands that even when I have to present you with a red sea, it's by design. Okay, can I say that again? The red sea is by design. It was not just by happenstance that they ended up facing the red sea. It was by design. Why would he do that? The red sea was designed to humble them and to purge them of their fears. That's why Peter writes this down, 1 Peter 5, 6. Somebody don't need this this week. That's why the Bible says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time, he may exalt you. Yeah, yeah because some of us think that in order to get through what we got to go through, it's our responsibility to make that thing happen. God says, No, let me send you to a red sea so you can understand how I work. Get yourself together. You shadow boxing, right? You lift the weight. You ready for the battle? He says, "Wait a minute. It's not my might, nor by strength, but my my spirit." But I need to show you how this thing works. The second thing I want y'all to get is the first thing: God's spirit is always in control. The second thing is that God knows what He's doing. Yeah. The Bible says. In Exodus chapter 13, verse 18, he says, So God led the people around by the desert road toward the sea. I said it was by design. In other words, there were two routes to get to Canaan. There was a short route. Huh? I mean, there was a short route. Why did he send it the long way? Right? You mean there was a short route to death freedom? That was a short route? You mean tell me we could have? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There were two routes to get to Canaan. And the shortest route would have been uh, to follow what the Bible said in verse 17 of chapter 13. The Bible said the way of the land of the Philistines. And they would have avoided the Red Sea. Why would God send us the long way around. Anybody facing the long way around? Why did you have to send me through that? Why did you have to send me in that direction? Why? Wouldn't it just have been easier to just let me finish the degree? Why did I have to face the school loans? Come on, God! There must have been an easier way. But God deliberately avoided the easier route. The Bible says that God led them around the desert toward the Red Sea. It says it was hot, it was dry, it was barren, it was a wasteland. Can you see them? The Israelites aren't you? Two million of them. Majority of them not even seeing the hand of God. Right? This thing in front of them called the Red Sea. The closer they get, the more they grumble, the more they murmur, the more they're saying, let's go back. The more they're fearful, the more they're scared. This huge congregation marching toward what they fear will be a death sentence for them. Oh, yeah, we talked about it. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to try this. We're going to try that. We're going to go here. We're going to go there. We're going to talk to them. We're going to talk to them. We're going to try this. 
And it looks like a death sentence to me. But God says, I'm not done. We're not through it yet. And so they're marching towards the Red Sea, this congregation. And let me help y'all. I said it already once. You don't get this as a congregation until you first get it, get it personally. It's an obstacle. It's a congregational obstacle. But it's also a personal obstacle. Y'all hear me today? And so you got to get this. Their eyes were focused on the problem in front of them that they forgot about the God that was leading them. Oh, I'm not playing and I'm not talking crazy. Even in the church, we can forget about how big our God is because we focus so much on what we're going through. We focus so much on the mess that we're in. We can forget that God is able. And so here's what I want us to get. This is the, this is the main point. I'm, I got plenty more, but this is the main point I want to get. Even with what they faced, God was fighting for Israel and against their enemies. This passage of scripture is as old as the Old Testament, but this passage of scripture also is what birthed their nation. Yes. Uh-huh. All right. You need to tell me that this problem of the Red Sea was responsible for giving birth to the children of Israel, for giving birth to Judah, for giving birth to the divided kingdom, for giving birth to really the, the remainder of the Torah, the remainder of the Old Testament, the remainder of what became the New Testament. You mean this is where it begins at the Red Sea? This route that God had designed for them that no one would have agreed to if he had given them a survey? You mean to tell me this is where that thing begins? I'm saying, yes. And I believe this is a testament to what God is burning in us right now. God is saying, once you come all the way through this, you're not going back. Uh, I'm trying to be somewhat prophetic here. Let me get personal. Some folk have not been blessed. Anybody been blessed by the circumcision miracle? Anybody been blessed? Raise your hand. Been blessed. Yeah. Right, Some of us been blessed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Some of us been blessed. Yeah. Some of us been blessed. Yeah. Some of us don't know about it, and that's okay yeah. if you don't know about it. That's all right. You'll learn more about it as we go. But there are others around us who have not been blessed through what God is doing in this church right now, because they've not connected their personal tests to our corporate tests. Y'all catch this? God doesn't just work on Sunday. Believe it or not, God is already working on your Monday. Right now. Matter of fact, we got the next, we got that too. Why you, why you, uh, uh, what do you say? Why you trying to figure it out? Somebody said he's already working it out. Y'all catching this? He's got your next week on his radar right now. And you can't get through your corporate Red Sea until you first wrap your brain around what God is doing in your personal Red Sea. All right. Okay, let me say this. I'm not sure if y'all catch what I'm saying. There's a direct connection between me sacrificing personally and us sacrificing corporately. Y'all hear this? Yeah. All right. We don't shout, y'all. So y'all get this. Does it make sense? Yes. Somebody say, connect the dots. Connect the dots. Let me say this again. There is a direct connection between what you do personally and what we do corporately. A personal sacrifice has a bearing on our corporate sacrifice. And so here's what I know. There are people in this church right now, as I speak this word, who are not with us corporately because they're confused personally. They ain't got to figure it out personally. Now, what do we have to do? We have to raise our faith and our belief to a level that can overcompensate for the lack of faith of somebody who walked in here who ain't got it together personally, even though God is moving corporately. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't know about you, but I'm not going to let somebody keep up from being blessed corporately because they're confused personally. Yeah. Yeah. Let me help you. I had a good night's sleep last night. 
You know why? Because I'm connecting the dots between what God is doing with me personally and what he's doing with us corporately. Yeah. Okay, like, okay, I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it. You got to get this. The enemy told me. Y'all got to hear this. The enemy told me that I did not qualify for the house that I wanted, that God said it was mine. Y'all want to hear this today. Because y'all ain't connected the dots. But I'm trying to connect the dots. The enemy said, my red sea said to me that you don't qualify for what God said it was yours. That's my red sea. That's my red sea. Are y'all with me? All right, some of y'all know the story, some of y'all don't. The rest of y'all are confused. Ask somebody. I was led to my Red Sea, and God said, I brought you to this Red Sea, and I'll get you through it. Are y'all catching this? This is my personal Red Sea, and this is why I know why God is doing what God is doing, because if he does it with me personally, he can do it with us corporately. Are y'all catching this? Connect the dots. Connect the dots. Somebody say, connect the dots. So, let's see. You say it. it's gonna happen right here by the month ago, didn't you? Did you? Was I frustrated? Yes. Was I angry? Yes. Did it take too long? Yes. Did it make sense? No. Did I feel totally betrayed afterwards? Yes. Are y'all catching this? Did I get tired? Did I feel like it was fair? No. But God said, I know what I'm doing. And I'm not through with you until you're through with this. You hear this? Yeah. Through it all. Through it all. Through it all. So, can I tell y'all this? God convinced the enemy's personal attack on my family into two month long window. Are y'all catching this? Connect the dots. A two-month-long window of divine opportunity. So I would know what it feels like personally to shout the victory over my Red Sea. That's what connects my personal triumph to what God is doing with us corporately. Come on, Connect the dots. Connect the dots. Connect the dots. Now some of y'all are thinking, hmm, what was God doing in my personal situation that will manifest in our corporate victory? Here's the problem. The enemy will, 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 will treat you, and one of the lessons that he will teach you is that God will lead you through your personal red sea. When he leads you through it, the enemy will say that he will try to convince you that it's okay to stop in the middle of the mess. Yeah, somewhere between day 13 of this mess and day 60, we said, let's just call it off. Okay, y'all catching this? Oh, we got so tired that somewhere between the beginning and the end, we said, that's enough. I'm through. I'm tired of faxing them stuff. I'm tired of signing stuff. I'm tired of going to the bank and getting them stuff and having to stamp and sign. I'm tired of printing stuff off. I'm tired of taking pictures of stuff. I'm tired of depositing stuff. I'm tired of asking me for stuff. I'm tired of presenting the stuff they asked me for. I'm tired of asking again and again for the same thing. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. Have you ever been there? The enemy is trying to convince you that yes, it's a mess, so give up in the middle of your mess. Are y'all with me today? So the enemy is saying, look, 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 just stop. Just give up. When you have a mountain, when you have mountains, uh, when you got mountains to the right of you, when you got mountains to the left of you, when you got enemies behind you, when you got darkness around you, when you got a desert beneath you, it's easy to focus on the mess that you're in and forget about the miracle that God is working out in the midst of it. Oh, I know I'm right about it. Are y'all catching this? It's easier to focus on the mess 
Even when you're in a miracle, God still woke you up this morning. God still put food on your tables. God still gave you good strength and health and strength. And you may not live where you want to live, but God still gave you a roof over your head. I wait what I want to be. It took a God-sized miracle to get the children of Israel into the midst of the sea. I'm on at verse 16. The Bible says, he tells Moses to raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. Yeah. And that's where some of us are right now. God is holding back what's holding you up. Hallelujah. What could make you lose your mind and yet you will still know who you are when you look in the mirror in the morning. Yeah. The enemy will say, why don't you just get used to your life on hold? Look at where you are. The enemy will convince you. Stop having faith that God can get you out of this. He's the one that got you into this. In the first place. Why are you praying about it? Stop trusting God. Don't, don't go back to school. Don't apply for the promotion. You make enough money to pay your bills. You don't need to save your money. Don't start that business. Don't write that book. Don't go back. Don't do this. Don't get married. Don't get into a relationship. Don't do this. Don't do that. Even Joe's wife told him. With all that he was going through, why don't you just maintain your integrity, curse God, and die? Don't tell me that the enemy won't come after you while you're in the middle of your mess. Yes, he will. That's the scheme of the enemy. God has expectations for his children that they won't stop in the middle of their personal Red Sea. Connect the dots, y'all. God ain't through with you until you get through it all. How do I know God was in control? Because he destroys everything that was connected with your body. We got to our, uh, we, we got out of our old location. I'm going to work with you on this one. We were living in a house. We were paying rent. We paid over $74,000 that we will never get back to. I know. The people all over this room, you're doing the same thing. Yeah. You're paying rent. I just decided to add it up. Over $74,000. We knew it was time to get out of that. Y'all catching this? It was time to get out of the bondage and out of the commitment that was zapping and sapping the living financial daylight out of us. But we got to the middle, and that's where things got tough. We weren't where we were, but we weren't where we were going. I'm talking about my personal Red Sea. We left our Egypt, but we weren't into our promised land. May not need to do it up here. Here's Egypt, there's the promised land. We were somewhere in here. Okay? We were no longer there, but we had not made it there. We were caught in the middle of our personal Red Sea. Anybody there? You, you left here, but you ain't quite made it there yet. You're just in the hallway. Maybe we need a hallway ministry. Right? You got out of this. You ain't got into that. Well, what do I do in the hall? Ways. Some of us have figured out a way to set up camp in the hallway. Yeah, there's tents in the hallway. Some of us, we started dragging furniture into the hallway. We done started getting comfortable while we're in the hallway. We done put our feet up in the hallway. You done, you done moved, you done brought the refrigerator into the hallway. The kitchen table is now in the hallway. It's a little tight, but the reality is you ain't where you were. But you ain't made it to where you're going. You're stuck in the hallway. That's where we were. We weren't where we were. But we weren't where we were going. And we were stuck. How do you keep your mind on amazing when you're stuck? How, 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 how do you keep it together when you're stuck? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? 
How do you keep going when you're stuck, Brother Jerry? God is teaching us what to do in the middle. Yeah. Right. Here's what he says. He says, this is my third point. You've got to know that our obstacles are God's opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. He will make a way where there seems to be absolutely no way out. Somebody needs to know the bigger the problem, Come on, the bigger his ability, the greater his ability to shine through whatever is holding. Yeah, right. yeah. The word of God says, Exodus 14, 9, it says, the Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses and chosen chariots, horsemen and troops, pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they camped by the sea. Yes, Once you get through it all, What's amazing is that you don't have to go back. The key is what you do in chapter 15. Are y'all here? Anybody see chapter 15 of Exodus? No, it's not. Take a look at it. She said, they sang a song. In other words, they lifted up praise. Yeah. Once God got finished doing what God was doing, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not trying to appeal to an emotional congregation right now. If I can just get y'all to rationally make this thing make sense. Yeah. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Christ's missionary was in a burning house. Yeah. Uh-huh. The house was on fire. Yeah. Are y'all hearing this? Yeah. I don't have time. Yeah. I don't have time, y'all. We ain't got time to pretty this thing up, pretty fire. Yeah. I got to just tell it like it. T I E S T S. This is our reality. Yeah. Yeah. Eight days ago, nobody thought that we would do what we said we would do. Now, ain't nobody up in here trying to take credit. Because we didn't do it. Um, There is tremendous evidence to why the children of Israel could not go back to Egypt. I'm not going to get theological. All I'm going to say is, is that when God brings us out, we cannot go back. When God delivers us, now, y'all hear that corporately, but before it happens corporately, you got to hear this personally. What would it look like if we got in our car and went back to the house that we just left? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? First of all, somebody else done moved in to our problem. So we would have to evict them yeah. from their problem yeah. so we can become our problem again. Yeah. Yeah. When God frees you, yeah. you're free in me. Yeah. Don't go back. Come on. Come on. Somebody said we ain't coming back. We ain't coming back. We gone. We, gone. we out of here. We done with this. Yeah. That thing is over. Yeah. Do I have a witness? Yeah. So I'm telling you, but here's what we're doing today. There are some who have not made a commitment. Let me give you the report. Can I give you a report? For those who are obedient, you have recognized the hand of God throughout this week. Because I've gotten the stories. I've gotten the text messages. 
And I know what God has done for many of you all personally. I gave you my personal rent seat. This week, we moved into a house that I was told that I could not qualify for. And that's not about me. That's not about me. Y'all practice. Y'all miss it. It's not about me. Don't, get, don't go there. Don't go there. Don't get it twisted. God did that so that we could do this. God said, I have to give you something to understand so that when you contextualize it, you ain't talking about what you heard, you're talking about what you know. So he started this back on May 21st. He started this Red Sea journey that none of us want to be a part of. Am I right, Mama? Because they had to watch us go through. They had to watch us with no place to go. They had to watch us separate our families. My clothes went one way. My kids' clothes went the other way. We couldn't eat as a family. We couldn't eat around the table. We couldn't pray together before our, before our meal. We, we had to split up showers. We had to pick you up and drop you off and turn you around and figure you out. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. 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 That's my personal red sea. There was a point where I literally, I literally said to myself, am I supposed to be crazy? <laughs> Is this supposed to? No, you let somebody accuse you. Yeah. Come on and preach. Thank you, Jesus. Long enough. Yeah. And you know you ain't done nothing wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And then somebody literally tells you, y'all ready for this? Can I just testify? And somebody literally tells you that the, the church, the money that the church gives us, that's just a different world. We don't know what to do with it. Am I right, Brother Brother Jay? How many times do you have talked to him? To prove to them that I'm doing what God called me to do. You let somebody do that to you long enough. That was the point where I literally said, am I supposed to be crazy? Yeah. Uh -huh. To go through all of this? Yeah. To watch your children? Yeah. 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 Say, Daddy, I want to go home. Yeah. Uh -huh. Can y'all feel that? Yeah. Daddy, I want to go home. Yeah. And all I can say is, baby, we get there. No. Baby, no. Yeah. we get there. Yeah. Baby, yeah. Come on, we yeah. get there. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's my Red Sea. Yeah. But everybody in here has got one. Yeah. 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 God is holding back something in your life. Yeah. But if you focus on the Egyptians, yeah. the mountains, yeah. the darkness, and the desert, you'll miss it. Yeah. You'll miss it. God's got a promised land in front of you. Yeah. So, Seven days ago, we had a no. This weekend, we finally, after, what is this month? This is the eighth month? Seven months. After seven months, we finally got, we'll think about it over the weekend. Oh, y'all better praise God. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they just saying no, 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 no. No, no, no. We finally got it. We'll think about it. So we praise God for we'll thinking about it. Yes, yes, Lord. Now, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let me say this as loud as I can say it. Don't take what I'm about to say wrong. Because the Word of God says He can do exceedingly. Does anybody know what that means? What does that mean? More than enough. Y'all hearing this? So that means that there's somebody in here who has not made a commitment to the Circle City Mirror. Y'all got to get this. We said on this day seven days ago that we needed to do what? What? We need to raise set. We went from six hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars in debt down to seventy-five thousand dollars. 
We said we need to raise seventy-five thousand dollars. When do we need it? All right, tomorrow's our deadline. We have raised seventy-five thousand dollars. And apply. 
to make sure that they have the financial stuff straight, that they have the software that they need, the hardware that they need, the booty that they need, the accounting they need, the fine. Y'all thought that the unconference was just for the unconference, didn't you? Come on, bro. Uh-huh. It wasn't. It was a setup. Because God is going to break, I guess we at this, at this point, we'll probably have over, over 600 registrants around this city. We'll probably have over 300 show up, plus 100 youth, about 400 people in a space that won't even fit us. But we're doing it because people are drawn to what God is doing through this ministry. And so that is the stage that will allow people to be honest and transparent and stop acting like churches ain't struggling. Because they are. Yeah. I know why some of the phone calls didn't come back, because they struggling too. Yeah. But what they don't know is, is that you can give your way out of debt. Yeah. Uh-huh. Come on. Oh, I said something, ain't that good? You hear you? Yeah. You can give your way out of debt. You can give your way out of trouble. That's why the Bible says, for God's so little word, that he gave his only begotten son, right? He gave his way out of our debt. So, that's not to be braggadocious. That's not to be big headed. That's not where I am. Some of y'all know me by now. Some of y'all don't. Y'all can think that, but that's not who Pastor G is. I'm so very quickly trying to set this up so that so we can let those who need help get the help that they need. You ain't got to know nothing about us. All you got to know is that God bring us out. Right? So that we can lead others out. Now, one thing that I've noticed is that the more God does, the less we seem to. Yeah. Uh huh. There are people who need to be around what God is doing. It is not your job to decide who needs to come. It is not your job to be like. Uh, uh, the, the belly of a fish. Jonah. They don't need God. No. It is your job to testify what God has done for you and us. And then let God do the rest. There are some people that should be here right now. And they're not here because you decided not to say nothing. It's not about numbers, y'all. I'm not in the swelling. I'm in the growing. Right? We say that all the time. Swelling means there's an infection. Growing takes work. We must tell what God has done for us. Now, we still haven't yet prayed. What y'all doing right now is yet prayed. But we still got to hear from these folks tomorrow. They still got to call us back. So some of y'all, this is going to take more than a 7 p.m. conference call, prayer call. Some of y'all need to be praying yeah. over every black eyed peak. Yeah. Yeah. One black eyed peak, Lord. Another black eyed peak, Lord. Another black eyed peak, Lord. Yeah. Pinto bean, whatever. Pray over all of them. Yeah. Are y'all following this? Yeah. I'm done. Put your hands together now. Yeah.